Katie Myers does an unbelievable job. Uh, her team is always so hard to play against because they defend so well and they're always well prepared. So we knew it was going to be a tough game and uh, just proud of the way we were able to handle it. Uh, you know, these young ladies have been unbelievable. Uh, you know, I always said when I got to this level, I wanted to, to win with high character uh, individuals. And uh, it's just been such a great journey. I mean, in the last few years, what a legacy these, these folks are leaving. Uh, three straight tournament titles, uh, regular season championship. Uh, that's not easy to do, especially in this league. It is so talented, so many great coaches. Uh, just, uh, again, unbelievable accomplishment. And uh, I may get dumb in a hurry, like I said, out there now uh, with them leaving. I've been able to ride them for four years, so uh, five years in some cases. So couldn't be happier for them, though. That's why they came back, the fifth-year kids, was to try to rewrite the final chapter. This isn't the final chapter, but it's a pretty nice uh, chapter to, to go out. Greensboro's been unbelievable. Uh, I'm trying to see if we can be maybe a number two seed and get sent to Greensboro. Uh, <laughs> we'll see if we can talk to the committee about that. But uh, again, just couldn't be prouder of what they've done. All right, we'll take questions. Please raise your hand. We'll get the mic to you. The first one here, Jonas, and the second round. Coach Ward, you said over the last couple of years how you like to lay in the weeds and sneak up on people. Um, you knew that wasn't going to happen this year with the preseason top five ranking and everybody coming back. Was this championship more challenging or more rewarding because of those reasons? Yeah, I think I think in a lot of ways it was more challenging. Uh, you know, trying to make sure we didn't uh, read the press clippings and maybe let up and relax. Uh, but we went through a lull maybe uh, middle of January, early February, where I just felt like they were kind of, you know, over me. <laughs> you know, let's just get to March, you know, will this guy just shut up for a minute? Uh, but then all of a sudden, you know, a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, uh, practice started being fun again. I saw a lot of energy and uh, they were more focused. And, uh, you know, it's just been an amazing ride. and. Uh, you know, again, uh, I think it was a challenge for me and maybe for them too. Uh, but uh, that's what makes it even sweeter when uh, you're able to uh, come out and accomplish both those things this year, regular and postseason tournament. Go ahead. I just wanted to play with the pain. Yeah. How'd y'all feel about it? Did you feel pressure? Uh, Way to pay attention over there. That's what he said, Coach Ward. Um, yeah, I definitely thought it was kind of more challenging this year. I mean, uh, teams know that everyone's coming back and um, they know what we have, but I think we just had to dig deep in ourselves and just execute everything and uh, everything will just fall through. Okay, next question over here on the left, Aaron then Brad. Aaron Beard with the AP. This is for Lisa. Can you walk us through how you got hurt? I don't know if you landed on somebody's foot or just awkwardly. How much pain were you in? And is it just a sprain, I guess? Uh, yeah, I just took a bad fall, um, but I'm good, and I'll be back out there, get a little treatment these next couple of days, and be back out there. All right, Brett, then Brian. Uh, this is for Raina. What went through your mind and the rest of your, your crew's mind when you saw her down and then going to the, uh, to the locker room? And then also for both players, how much did, did you try to wear Miami down? They were playing four, their fourth game in four days. How much did that kind of factor into what you tried to do today? Um, I mean, when Elisa went down, obviously you, you get scared. And if anyone on the team goes down, you kind of get scared. But um, she got back up and started walking off a little bit. And so we, we all figured she was fine. We were hoping she was fine at least. And I mean, we were right, she is. But um, <laughs> yeah, that was basically it. OK, on the left, Tim Peeler. Uh, Elisa and Raina, for you both, at what point did you feel like you were done with Coach Moore and what sort of thing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think mean, it was three years ago. <laughs> what made you start listening again? Uh, I'm just wondering if it was a joke that sort of turned you off and maybe uh, he got serious again. Uh, no, I mean, honestly, uh, it's a long season. You know, we start in June, July, and we go until April. So uh, it's just tough sometimes um, with school loaded on top of us and then 
game after game and practice after practice, we get tired of each other sometimes. Like, I'll be honest. Like, I get sick of seeing some people's faces. But, <laughs> <laughs> not yours, though. Uh, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you come in, and, um, and I love everyone on the team with all my heart. So you just got to keep pushing through. Um, and it gets tough when you just lean on your teammates' shoulders, lean on your coaches, and get through it. Brandon, can you answer that one also? <laughs> um, I mean, as players, I feel like every time you're mad in a game, it's because of the coach. But we all stick together, and we love him. We just always make jokes, and he makes jokes, jokes back. Years ago, I had a – I'm going to throw this story. Years ago, I had a player that uh, – we were on the long bus ride when you are like D2 or whatever, and I, I I'd always go back in the back and see if any of them were awake and try to bug them a little. And one of them was awake. I sat down with her, and – she started saying how she felt bad. The only time she called her grandmother was when she was upset. So trying to be the nice guy, I said, you know, you know my, my office is always open. You can come in and talk to me. Coach, you're usually the one I'm upset with. <laughs> so I went back up the front, stayed to myself. I get it. Right here in front. Yeah, Coach, um, today I thought Diamond probably played her best game of the, this tournament, um, 11 points, three steals, three assists. Do you think it just kind of took her some time to get used to this atmosphere? This is the first time she's played here. Yeah, I think the whole thing's been tough. You know, she was obviously, a, you know, a Big Ten, you know, whatever. She, I mean, she won a lot of accolades last year. And now you come to a team that had a lot of success a year ago, last couple of years and all of a sudden they, they got everybody back. I mean, it's kind of hard to find your niche. So I think that's been hard on Diamond at times, and, and I'm hard on Diamond at times. I'm trying to, you know, she's going from being like the scorer to trying to blend in and, and uh, you know, make everybody better. You know, make everyone around you better is what you're trying to do as a point guard. So uh, again, I know it's been a challenge for her, but obviously, she's had some big games for us, won some games for us. And, uh, you know, I'm basing it on potential. She's going to be a great player. Uh, she's already a great player, but uh, I think she's going to have more of an impact as we go. But, uh, you know, just the thing that's made it easy is she's an unbelievable person. You know, everybody on the team loves her. If you ever hear her laugh, she sounds like a dolphin. Okay? Uh, I mean, you know, you just can't help but love somebody like that. So, flip her. <laughs> okay, uh, here in the middle, right? Elisa, Coach Moore mentioned your legacy. You've got three ACC tournament titles, two MVPs here in Greensboro. Just how much does leaving that here at NC State mean to you after these years? Uh, I mean, it's huge. That's the reason why I came to NC State, why I wanted to play for Coach Moore, because um, I saw potential in this program. And to be able to take it to new heights um, and do it with everyone, like the seniors that stayed, everyone that's come in, you know, it's a program win. Um, it goes beyond the team, like athletic trainers, nutritionists, all that. So to be able to come in NC State just as a whole, as a program, like we all win this championship. And for three years straight, it's just been pretty amazing. I think it speaks highly of who we have in charge um, at coach and then just who we have a part of the program in general. Okay, I know we have a couple questions on the left. Jeff Mills right there. We'll come down to the front. Um, Elisa, did you have to talk Coach Warren to let you back into the game? And how important was it to come back into the game? A lot of us thought that, you know, that with the big lead, you wouldn't, we wouldn't come back. Uh, no, you know, I told him, I said, hey, I'm good, I'm ready um, if you need me. I was like, I'm going to stay warmed up on the bike, but I'm ready if you need me. Uh, and so I trusted my team to be able to handle the game. Um, but, you know, we saw the Louisville game where Miami um, was able to come back down in the fourth quarter. So I think Coach Moore just wanted to keep pressure on um, and didn't want any drop off. So, you know, I was pretty happy to be back out there for the last couple minutes. Okay, on the left, Gabe. Uh, Raina and Coach, when at least went down, it kind of felt like, you and, and DJ really you know, took control. What changed on the floor that you were able to get to the elbow and hit those jumpers and DJ was able to get open uh, from deep? Um, I think just knowing that we, we didn't really, that just knowing that they weren't doubling down on the post as much because Elisa wasn't there. So it kind of just opened up the whole entire floor. And um, I think with Elisa out, we kind of just look for our shots more as well. So <clears throat> that was it. Yeah, you know, I thought about not putting her back in. Uh, but uh, part of the reason I put her back in is I wanted those 8,000 people or so wearing red to know she was okay. And I know that sounds crazy, but I wanted to get her back out there and let her, let her get up and out of court a couple of times and uh, know that she's going to be ready to go uh, here in a couple of weeks. Okay, Aaron Beard on the left. Yeah, Wes, this, I've got a follow-up after this, but 
you've talked about depth with this group. They've all sacrificed. I was curious your thoughts about what Camille gave you when Elisa was out. Yeah, you know, Camille's had some big games over here in Greensboro. Uh, you know, when obviously Elisa's, like I said, has been a program changer uh, for NC State. Uh, but Camille Hobby is someone that, you know, nowadays a lot of kids would have left, just be real honest, you know, the transfer portal and all that. And Camille's been uh, loyal and hardworking. And so that's why when we get a chance to get her in, I have a lot of confidence in her and know that she's going to, so going to bring some, uh, you know, bring some good things to the floor. So I know she's disappointed that she doesn't play more, but I don't think I'd want it any other way, you know. And uh, she keeps coming back, and uh, obviously uh, with Elisa going to the draft and moving on, superstar and all that stuff, uh, you know, Camille's going to, you know, play a big part in trying to continue this success. There. And then the other question was, you guys, a lot of people talk about all your offensive weapons. I think the highest percentage anyone shot against you in this tournament was 38%. Do you guys get enough credit defensively? I know you've been on them about defense, but do you think you're a better defensive team than people give you credit for? Yeah, I don't worry about that. I mean, I'm, I'm just, you know, want to see it on the court. And uh, I think when we're locked in and we have urgency out there, uh, we can be pretty good. And I was disappointed. I thought we gave up too many layups. You know, we we got to do a better job. And one thing we've prided ourselves on the last few years, what we call allowing people to miss. Don't bail them out. Don't foul them. And uh, we, we're doing that a little bit more than we'd like. So there's still things that we can get better and clean up. And if this team wants to get where we want to get. Let me say this. In the first half, at least, I hadn't even stared at the stats much. But first half, we went to the offensive boards. You know, Elisa had three, KJ had three. That's what we've been talking about, how this program can take another step. And so, uh, you know, there's still things we can get better at for sure. And hopefully they uh, they understand that and, and want to go back to work here in a few days. Got a question in the back? Yeah, I know there's more you want to do, Wes, but do you ever at times get wistful and kind of think back before the renovation of rentals, brought high school and things, and now all of a sudden you're a three-time champion and you're in the top tier of a conference that when you got here was very heavy, you know, they were top heavy. Yeah, yeah you're right. Uh, sometimes I probably don't sit and reflect on that, but, you know, Kai Crutchfield, KJ, I mean, they committed when they were young to this program. And, you know, there was times early on, it's tough. Going from high school to this level is a big jump, and especially when some of them played maybe smaller schools uh, in rural areas. And so it's frustrating at times when you've been the star all your life, and now all of a sudden, uh, you know, you're maybe not playing a lot. Uh, but they hung in there, they stuck it out, and now look at the rewards. And again, nowadays with people popping around, changing schools, uh, again, KJ, Kai, a lot of them stuck it out uh, when I'm pushing them and they maybe weren't playing as much as they like. And, uh, but look at, look at how it pays off. And, uh, you know, again, that is rewarding to see. I don't know how many of you saw the fans today when we pulled in. Uh, we got here an hour and 45 minutes before the game, and I bet there was thousands of fans lined up to welcome the bus. Uh, made me choke up. I mean, I'll be honest with you, it's unbelievable what our fans are doing right now with this program. Sold out, I think, seven of our last game, eight games. Uh, and that's all because of these folks. You know, they put this program on the map and made it, uh, you know, made it cool. <laughs> so uh, uh, it has. It's been an unbelievable ride from where we started, our attendance and all that and, and the success. Yeah, it's hard for me to believe. I didn't know if we would ever win one of these, okay? I really didn't. Uh, and now these guys have won three of them in a row, so pretty awesome. Okay, fourth row middle. Brady, you said a couple times last year that you came to NC State to play in big games like this. What does it mean to you to win an ACC championship in both of your years here? It means a lot. I mean, like you said, I did come here to play these big games and to win these big games and to win championships, and uh, that's what we've been doing. So it just means so much because coming from uh, mid-majors, you don't ever think that you're going to get to the next level, and then I get to the next level, and then we win. And so it's just – it's been great. Okay, Jonas, on the right. Coach Moore now with three championships, people started throwing the word uh, dynasty, dynasty around. This is the dynasty you built here at NC State, three, three championships. One year at a time, baby, one year at a time. You know, uh, 
And again, like I said, we're getting ready to lose the players that have, you know, put this thing on the map. So, uh, no, we're not talking about that. This league's too good and too big of a challenge. So, but, you know, how about, I mean, again, uh, Elisa coming here from, you know, right here close to Greensboro and uh, making such a big impact, something she'll always remember. And, you know, I'm looking forward to 10 years from now when they're coming in for the 10-year anniversary of the championship, you know, maybe I'll still be able to walk out there. Uh, I'm looking forward to them being able to do that. What a legacy. And Raina, you know, it kills me that I only got to coach her for two years, work with her for two years. Uh, what a kid, man, you know. So uh, on one hand, though, it could have just been one year. So that uh, COVID rule helped, helped get her back another year. So unbelievable players and people who couldn't ask for a better better life. All right, we've got time for a few more. Brett? For the players, um, not Miami not only played four straight days, but they had a couple of really tough games coming in here. How much did you guys try to push tempo to, to take advantage and maybe wear them down, and how successful do you think you were at that? Um, yeah, I think, honestly, one of our goals whenever we go into games is always to kind of like push tempo and transition, get out and run. Um, we have a deep bench, so play until you're tired and run as hard as you can, and then we can sub. Um, but we definitely did hit on the fact that this was Miami's fourth game. Um, yeah, fourth game. So we knew we wanted to get out there and just push it. Um, and like I said, we were deep, so if we needed a sub, we could have. Um, and we, they had tough games, so we were blessed to have like the double bye and get in here and get some wins. Okay, we got time for two more here. Front. Coach, you mentioned high school. Uh, next week, North Carolina has their high school championship games. I think four of them are going to be played at Reynolds. What advice would you give the coaches and the players going into those games next week? Yeah. You know, cherish it. You know, we all just went through this COVID time and we couldn't have fans there. Heck, we didn't get to play in the NCAA tournament one year because of it. So, you know, we, we take it for granted. And so, you know, cherish those moments. And, you know, I'm the world's worst at not totally enjoying the, you know, some of the things because, again, I'm always thinking the next step. But, uh, you know, Elisa, I got to see her in those, in those games uh, when she was in high school and won a state championship. And uh, it's pretty special. You know, it means a lot. So I'm excited for them and looking forward to seeing some of those games. And, and uh, you know, just like I said, it's a great accomplishment. Uh, enjoy the ride. Okay, last question back left. Hi, Coach. Uh, Kyle Marshak from 3304 Sports here. Uh, congrats, first of all. Elisa said she wasn't the MVP. The team was. What does that say about the leadership and selflessness on this team to you going into the tournament? Yeah, that's just typical, you know, of Elisa. She's just such a great, caring person. Uh, cares about her teammates. And, and like I said, she's made sacrifices. There's times I felt bad that maybe she didn't get some personal accolades because she didn't play, you know, 35, 36 minutes and, and a, you know, a safe win, you know, when you could have just left her out there. Um, but, you know, she never complained about that. And like I said, I feel bad. She probably should have won more awards than she has. But, uh, you know, again, it is a team thing and everybody works hard. You want to see everybody get minutes when they can and, and be rewarded for all their hard work. And uh, she's been great about that. So. I love her. I love Raina. I mean, uh, like I said, it's just unbelievable uh, who I've gotten hanging. And I know they sometimes they don't see that side because I'm driving, driving, driving. But uh, when I'm talking to other people, uh, I let them know how special they are. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.